Hey, 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 good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are. Give us a shout out where you are. Love to hear, see where you are. And we're going to get started in a minute. I'm going to talk to you about basically what you have to do to get your work shared out to the world. And that's really important that you have that in mind. And I'll talk about why. It, you know, what you have to do, steps you have to take, but also why that's so important to have that as your objective. I believe it's kind of the make break point in this whole ph photography thing. So uh, who's out there? Give us a shout. And while you're at it, if you guys, you know, can like, that seems to let YouTube know that other people are watching this, which is a good idea. And it kind of alerts other people that we should be watching it too. These are important, by the way, because I want you guys to get critiqued. I want to see your work and I also want to talk to you about stuff that's valuable. Okay, so let's do this first of all. So um, first of all, I want to thank our sponsor here, which is Bay Photo. Awesome, Bay Photo. And this fits right into what I'm going to talk to you guys about, which is sharing your work. So as always, after the show, you should go over there and buy one of these things. You get 15% off on metal prints. I have a couple of metal prints, and I actually really like them. They're, they're really cool because they just show your photographs in a different way. And also, they kind of come out from the wall. So you get kind of a three-dimensional look. I... I recommend you get one of these and you can get 15% off and we'll scroll up a little bit these are canvas wraps you can see what's cool about that is it wraps around the edge there no frame it just pops out from your wall also gives you kind of a, a three-dimensional look and then thin wraps they also wrap but they're thin and they do stand out from the wall these are all cool ways to show your photographs to share your work outside with the rest of the world not in your hard drive and then you're going to get 25 percent off on your first order so take advantage of this after the show head on over to bay photo lab and order something okay uh hey so Sue in Sun Valley, I bet you're still got a lot of snow. If you're getting any of these storms that we're getting here, it's crazy, you guys. We've gone, we've gone from five years of drought to just every day it rains. It's like, wait a minute, are we in Seattle or California? It's a completely different weather cycle. Uh, huge wind storms in the middle of the day yesterday. I got this emergency alert you know you're gonna have 80 mile an hour winds which we never had but we've had a lot of wind storms and fortunately we have uh, Tesla solar so we have power backup we've had a lot of power outages it's been an intense winter for us and Andrew in I'm not sure where you are Andrew but hi so keep telling us where you guys are how many feet of snow I see feet of snow Lots of feet. Okay. Oh, Jared's in the green room. You know, Jared, we should probably uh, get you out of the green room, huh? There we go. How's Hello, the... I'm here now. That's better. Okay. We left you in the green room there. And okay, guys, so let me talk to you about sharing your work. Why is that important? It's, it's really part of my whole story as a photographer. And this is a chapter, you know, in this book. My story as a photographer was, you know, I was a pretty good photographer when I was a teenager. And then I went into a completely different direction. Became a management consultant in Silicon Valley. Really didn't even pick up a camera other than snapshots for decades. Why is that? You know, I find like many things that you want to have kind of some focus space in order to you know really do photography and I just wasn't focused at that time I mean I was building a business I was raising a family and I just really didn't didn't have that in my in my space but then 
I built the company and it was doing great, but there was something missing and that was photography. So I sold it to my partners and I said, I'm going to go back to photography. And I picked it up, guys, from scratch because I'd been a darkroom photographer and all of a sudden we're in the digital age. I've never used Photoshop. This is in the early 2000s, late 1998 maybe or something. Early, early Photoshop. Fortunately, one of my kids was pretty adept at it. He showed me what to do. And I realized I had a lot of photographs, a lot of negatives sitting in boxes and photographs sitting in boxes. And there's this unfulfilled feeling when you haven't taken your work out and shown it to other people. My dog River is nudging me right now. She doesn't get why I'm staring at a blank screen instead of talking to her. It just never makes sense to her. Anyway, I said, okay, I'm going to get this stuff off the drive, put it on the wall. I scheduled some shows immediately, and I got into a magazine. I did some magazine spreads. I just kind of got into it. I thought, I've got to figure this out, so I'm going to go for everything I can. I started selling work in Big Sur at a cool shop. Um, I ran some Google ads and I even did like portraiture for people. I kind of just went all out. I thought I'm going to find every way I can to basically jumpstart my career. And so, you know, that, that was a big awakening for me. It was a transformation. And there is a transformation from your photography in your head or in your hard drive or on your phone to getting other people to get river getting <laughs> she's she's photobombing me getting other people <laughs> she's just going wild now biting the microphone cord and everything getting other people to see your stuff is honestly if you haven't done that you got to do that and you, it's a continuous process Okay, so that's why you want to do it. Now, how do you do it? Well, first of all, you got to make photographs. You got to make, you notice I didn't say take, you make photographs that you feel you're your worst critic. You have to pass your own test. You have to you have to come up with photographs that you feel are worth sharing. And if they don't pass your test, don't bother to show them to somebody else. I'm not kidding. This is really important. And you're the first person you got to sell on your work. So that means, <laughs> this doggo of mine, that means you got to have good photographs. And how do you get there? You follow my advice in this book and in my courses. My courses follow this book, which is really honing your photography skills so that you have work that you genuinely feel proud about sharing. That's going to change as you go through it. I look at stuff I shared early on, I'm like, ah, not as good as I, I wouldn't pass my test now. So that's a good thing. You're always going to raise your own bar, but you got to get your chops in as a photographer. And that means visualization, knowing your camera, knowing your equipment so well, as our friend Bob Holmes says, that the camera doesn't get in the way of your photography. Don't let your camera get in your way, because if it does, you're going to miss shots, right? Don't fiddle with your camera. That means you haven't learned it well enough. you got to get to know this thing like a close friend. Then you got to do your capturing, which is composition and lighting. And I definitely have stuff about composition in the book, but also in my other book, Secrets to Amazing Photo Composition. Lighting, I talk mainly about natural lighting. Um, then you got to process your images, which is also based on your vision. Then you get to sharing. You got to know those, those are five steps, guys, and they go around in a cycle. And that's really our trademark. The thing that makes AYP different than what other people are talking about is we're not focused on just one thing at a time. We're really trying to do a holistic job here because you share stuff it's going to add to your vision because you're kind of seeing what other people visualize from your photographs. With that information, you go back. That helps you with the next photograph. 
Also true with equipment. The more you learn about your equipment, the more you see the things that you can do with that equipment. You go, oh, wow, I've got a new way to visualize because I've learned something. Same thing in processing. Like when you really learn to process images black and white, like with DxO, Silver Effects Pro, for instance, it opens up doors for you how you can visualize a photograph. So those things all work interactively. That's really, really important in the process. I'm going to ask you guys a question. You can throw me an answer. So how many of you are sharing your work? And if you're not, what's, what's the bug? Why not? Throw that in the chat if you would. I'd like to hear from you. Like, this is so important because when you get out your work, and I don't mean, I didn't, you notice I didn't even say social media. I do sh stuff on social media like everybody else, but you know what? I call it fast food sharing. I don't like fast food. I mean, I like it like anybody else. It tastes good, but it's, you know, how do you feel an hour li later? after you eat a Big Mac and fries and Kentucky Fried Chicken. It tastes good. They make it They make it so it tastes good, but a lot of other things taste good going down, but then the after effects aren't worth it. Fast food sharing is social media. You get a millisecond as somebody scrolling by and, oh, I like that, or I comment on that. That's not really great sharing. Sharing means you, you put something there so people can experience it. That's why it's great to have it on the wall. Be sure you're sharing your work on your own walls. Go to Bay Photo Lab and get some prints made and that'll take care of that. All right, does anybody have... Okay, DP review is a great path. Yeah, um, DP review is closing down. What? Really? Seriously? It's owned by Amazon. Why would they close that down? I don't know. DP review, I have to... Dip, yep, they're differ. closing. Wow. I'm going to beg to differ with you. I find there's a lot of snarkiness on DP review, honestly. I'm... I'm why would they close down? Boy, B&H uh, is going to be happy to hear that. Yeah, it was just announced two days ago, I think. Oh, I'll have to read up on that. Anyway, thanks for the heads up on that. Uh, I don't, I don't know of any platform that's great except for the AYP Club. See, we created that because we want a space where you could get honest critiques, not snarky critiques. You know, the problem with I find with the snarkiness is like people who can't do criticize. You don't want criticism. You want a critique. Very different. All right, so, yeah, wow, April 10th, that's it. Amazing. I'm surprised. I know the guy that started it. He moved on to another post at Amazon. They bought they bought DP Review from him. He was in England. They bought it. And anyway, long story. Okay, so share your work. Let me know your thoughts about sharing. You can always ping me and... Uh, in the AYP club. Maybe Jared will just put a post in there to kind of follow this conversation. Question, are you sharing? What are your experiences in sharing your work? If you're not, why not? What is it? Are you afraid to put your work out there? I get it. I have that feeling too. I mean, I don't know a photographer that doesn't have some trepidation when they put their work out. How is it going to be received? You know, what are people going to think? Is this, am I worth it? You know, is this worthy of, you know, making a big print or putting it into a book? Those are all concerns and considerations going right on here. And we want to try to get around that stuff. All right, let's jump over to your work. Let's do some critiquing. Before I leave this subject, I'm going to say it again. Just keep in mind that the end product of the cycle of photography is sharing your work. Now one thing I learned about visualization from Ansel Adams is he would visualize all the way through to the finished print. Where is that print going to reside? Is it going to be on your wall? Is it going to be in a book? Is it going to be in a magazine? Where are you showing that? And that would guide his process. 
You know, he had massively huge prints in his house, for instance. Or is it going to be a little tiny print this big? You know, I mean, that determines a lot of things as you make choices along the way. So always think in your visualization process of where you're going to end up sharing that work. Okay? All right. Let me know, guys. All right. So, Jared, I'm going to switch over to you. And... Tell me who this is and what we're looking at here. All right. This is a photo from our good friend, Mache. Uh, and let me find, here's the specific pose. Uh, so doing portrait in daylight to add some depth, texture, and to build up some space, I used a potted flower. Very cool. I like this photograph a lot. I like the fact that, yes, you put some layers there in front of us, but where does our eye go immediately to the subject? So you're vignetting her. Yeah. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to frame things. And one of this, one of the ways of doing that is kind of an oval shaped frame, which is what you've got here. And the, pur the really one of the purposes of frame, actually framing has multiple purposes, but one of them is to lead your eye. Another one is to provide some contrast between your subject and the frame. And another one is to put some space there, a feeling of dimension. So you've accomplished all three of those things. Well done. I really, I really like that photograph. Good job. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, this is from our friend Andrew. Um, he had posted recently. Uh, he is. This is a part of his ongoing border series. Um, and this was taken at a reenactment for the uh, Columbus raid. Uh, let me find the original. He posted twice, one with color photos. I don't even know what and the one Columbus with black raid and white. is. Um, this is from the 1916 raid on Columbus, New Mexico what? by Pancho Villa. So this is a reenactment. Oh, ah, that's that. Pancho Villa. He said, hey, man, we're taking back our... Our territory. How funny. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh, from the reenactment that they hold uh, to cool. commemorate uh, that raid. That's cool. Okay. Uh, th you know, this is a kind of a documentary-ish shot, and it serves a purpose in that regard. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that I kind of come to mind. You know, how you might want to also enhance this photograph um, I would probably recommend a shallower depth of field so we really focus on poncho there because my eye does kind of go all over the place especially that sign in the background I'd like to get rid of that I you know what would happen if you went into like 2.8 and you just just had poncho we could see these other folks but we're really you know, bringing our eye. A lot of photography is about where do you want your viewer's eye to go? And, you know, you have him front and center, so there's no question about it. But I'd let that whole background just go away. You can, you know, do that in, okay, you can do that in post-production. Dan Milner would frown on me saying that. But, you know, unless this is a documentary or photojournalistic shot, you're more than welcome to do that. Another thing I'd recommend, you're shooting at kind of at eye level, I would recommend a low angle. Yeah, bend down. You know what it'll do is it'll, it'll give you a cool, like, this dude is a really big guy, you know? And I don't mean just big physically. I mean, he's willing to storm the United States. Come on, this guy's got some cojones, right? So, you know, angles play a big part in that. If you want to make your subject appear more dominant, get a low angle. A great example of this, Jared, you should bring it up, is Annie Leibovitz's shot of Arnold Schwarzenegger on skis. Let's bring that up if you can find it. Yeah, I'm bringing that up right now. And you'll see what I mean, how you could really make this guy be bigger than life and that's kind of what he is already so why not go with it let's see yeah there he is okay let me see if it'll zoom in a bit here so yeah. Annie did something very interesting 
she actually had she's below the snow level if you notice that see that see point out the snow level she's shooting from below that she actually had a trench dug out so she could get down so low that she's below the ground now look what that does to him imagine now at the same time she's standing up and shooting him eye level what would that have done totally different photograph okay so that's what I'm talking about. That's a really good example of a very low angle. Now you don't have to go to that extreme and have a trench dug to shoot Poncho, but do what, what sports photographers, let's go back to Poncho here. Do what sports photographers do, which is they bend down on their knee, right? They drop down to one knee to get that low angle. And, and at a shallow depth of field, I think you get a a really amazing photograph. That those are my suggestions. Next time you go out, try those out. And everybody else, listen as you're listening to this, make sure you're using these tools because these are these are good tools. Okay. All right. And uh, as a note, it's a great way too if you're photographing something that is very well known. We went to Mount Rushmore, and my dad ended up getting onto the ground yeah. to get his photo and everybody was laughing at him but he showed them on his digital camera what the photos looked like and then you suddenly had like uh you know a totally half a different. dozen people on the ground trying to do the same thing because right. they're like wow those look so cool and different from everybody else's photos so it's a great way to add variety that way there you go absolutely okay all right who's all who's, right who's, this is from Chris. Uh, he was out and about trying to get uh, photographs of some birds, but the lighting was terrible. Then he noticed a collection of birds in the symmetrical branches, and uh, he is so happy with this that he thinks he might take out uh, some, uh, make some table mats out of this photo because he's quite pleased with how it turned out. Okay, is this an actual um, negative? I see the edges of the negative, or is that just a frame that you used digitally? I think it might just be a frame, only he could fully answer that one. Okay, so. yeah. All right. Um, if I, my main suggestion on this would be um, totally take the contrast out the top, make it a complete black and white. Yeah, get rid of that grayish stuff in the background, because that just kind of muddies it up. So that's in your post-processing. Um, you know, if you're going to make a silhouette, go all the way. And that'll, that'll make a different looking image. So that you have that white in the back. You just do that by dialing your sliders, you know, in, in Lightroom. Take your white as far as you can. Take your black as far as you can. Give it that dynamic range. And I think that'll make a more interesting photograph. Give that a shot. Maybe put it back in the AYP club and let's see what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, that'd be very interesting. Yeah, that'd be my recommendation. All right. This is from Amir. This is in Jerusalem at a ultra orthodox synagogue during one of their feasts. That's amazing. I have actually never seen one of those white hats like that. Mm hmm. It's very interesting. <clears throat> He's got a he's got a uh, glass of something in his hand and he's cracking up or he's singing probably he's probably not cracking up but there's a lot of joy coming from some not just him but some of the other people um, I would just my only suggestion shallow depth of field again let's just concentrate on our guy and I would also say drop down also he's pretty big make him bigger make him more dominant so again why why do I say that with both of these because it'll just make your eye feast on this guy we're already got an interesting character let's take it up take it up a notch you know let's get let's get even more interest drop down make him appear bigger which will also by the way make that background disappear that that serves two purposes when you drop that's why sports photographers tend to use that because they want to clean the background up 
and right now you got a lot going on in the background this is, drop down on your knee get that shot shallower depth of field it's an interesting photograph I just think that would raise the interest and I hope you guys don't mind those are my instant thoughts you know try these things out just remember say to yourself when you're out photographing try a different angle try a different angle just try it see what happens maybe a high angle would be more interesting not in this case but sometimes it could be but definitely keep that in your repertoire so you have also more shots to choose from that's also really important because sometimes you you don't know until you get back you're in the heat of the moment but give yourself a lot of variety to work with okay interesting photograph I like it yeah um, going to something very different um, this is a experimental shot Hugo uh, was working on um, doing some experimenting with an intimate scene during my holiday in the Philippines it was quite difficult to capture the incoming wave at the right position wow oh now I get it yep that's, wow that's it what took me a minute to get what's going on here sand with a wave very yep. cool I like that it's 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 definitely you know a it makes you look at it it makes your eye draw in and go what am I looking at here and um, you know photography doesn't have to be quote real right you can shoot out of focus and get an, an interesting look this isn't out of focus but you're shooting a, a you're really making a, a a leap from wow, you know, okay, I'm going to show the beach and show the sand and make it all really clear what it is. I had no idea what that was when I was looking at it. I thought it was actually a, a exposed negative or something, you know, that you just exposed in the sun partially. But I see it now. That's very cool. And that gives you a, a painting-like feeling. I, I applaud this. This is good. I like the experimentation that you're doing there. So good one. I have a similar photograph of a wave coming in over some rocks. And uh, it's, in, it's in one or more of my books. But yeah, that's cool that you're experimenting with that. All right. We've got, this is from our... You don't even have friend. to tell me who that is. Yeah. That's Sue, right? Yep, it's Sue, and uh, she got her first chance to uh, photograph wow. some cougars. Taken wow. in difficult conditions, low light last evening, shooting through the branches and twigs at 250 millimeters and heavily cropped, but I was happy to capture these guys. Wow. You know, those, those guys can be really nasty. We have uh, mountain lions where I live, cougars, mountain lions. They they can be gnarly. You don't want to you don't want to mess with them. So good on you, Sue. Two, what was the millimeter lens? Two hundred. Two fifty. Two fifty. You. Okay, and you cropped it so you're safely behind these guys. What are they looking at? Wow. That's a good question. Something up in the tree. Oh, I think it might be whatever this is. Yeah. It might be a bird. I'm not a fan of these guys. I mean, they're beautiful to look at, but. You know, we have, mostly these guys should be living in the mountains, but they're spotted all the time now uh, in urban areas. Mark Benioff, who has uh, Salesforce, took a photograph, or I think it was on his uh, security cam in San Francisco. There's cougars in San Francisco. I mean, it's kind of wild. Um, you know, Sue, from, from a recording standpoint, it's you know you recorded these these cats I would probably I know you're already kind of far away and it's maybe a little difficult but I'd probably just go with the one on the left and just try to get that little more of a story there going on you know there's probably some other gestures or motions I mean I'm I know what your your photographs of your dogs are like and deer I think there's probably a little more you could you could do with that. Sue's got a note here. After they left, a very large 
bull elk came walking down the river. In, in the, the river. river. Wow. wow. Okay. You live in a beautiful place with a lot of wildlife. Anyway, I would imagine you got some other frames. I just kind of look until some more of a focused story kind of appeared and just maybe wait around until I don't know what it is, but I, I feel like there's some more frames there that could could turn into a, a more focused story, but good one. And bravo on your courage there. <laughs> and I hope you were in a safe place while you were doing that. Yes. Um, all right, let me grab this one and then I'll grab one from Christopher. He put uh, several up. This is from uh, Eddie and he took this at a park in the Adelaide Hills in uh, Australia. Wow, in Adelaide. Cool. Long exposure. I like that. You know, we're getting that that cool look. You might have used an ND filter. It's a leading line, uh, you know, composition because the edges of the stream just kind of lead your eye. You know, it's a beautiful kind of still, not still life, but it's an environmental photograph, like a painting has that painting look and um, you just Sue said I just stepped out the back door <laughs> that's amazing keep those cougars away uh, anyway you know photography where did photography come from it grew out of painting right and so composition we should go back to the roots of composition and painting to look at our photographs some of the best photographers I know I've done that. They really spent a lot of time, like Joey L., Bob Holmes, they spent a lot of time looking at paintings and working that into their composition. So you've done a good job on that. It's, uh, you know, basically telling the story of this lovely little stream. The water's kind of brown, which tells me that it's rained recently. Uh, that's something I. I noticed because I look out my from our upper room and I can see the ocean is very brown which is because the Carmel River runs right into it and it's brown because of so much rain it's literally turning the whole part of the ocean there brown anyway good one all right and here's one from our good friend Christopher Scott Carpenter Always enjoy his work. Oh, why is it not coming up? Christopher. We'll see if this is New York. Is it Mexico? Where in the world are you? I'm thinking we're in New York. I don't know why it's coming up, so I'm going to just bring it up on Facebook Okay. instead. But here is the image. Okay, interesting. Chinese New Year. Um, you know... I, I'm just going to say, because I've seen a lot of your work, and I'm very impressed with your work, this doesn't pop for me. And I'm not sure why that is. I'm just thinking, what, what could be done to make it pop? Um, you know what? It's probably, the it's, it's probably the same recommendation that I've given, which is shallower depth of field, lower angle. Somehow seeing this at eye level, just it just becomes like okay here's this person I would say drop down on your lower angle I mean it's again it's the same deal something is larger than life let it be larger than life it'll also clean up your background so that would be the the recommendation I would shallower depth of field go down on your knee and see what happens you know our theme for today it's you know it's weird how this happens isn't it Jared like we have this yeah I find myself you guys present some similar things you know and it's like give it a shot let's try that out and see what happens again tell yourself hey what other angles could I capture this from and going you know possibly up high would be interesting because that's if I'm not mistaken that's the head of a big long uh, monster, what do you call a dragon type thing, and there's probably a whole body that follows behind it, which would be interesting too. 
you know, it's it's just something to try. But I got I try the low angle. All right. Uh, here's another really interesting one that I found fascinating. Um, just kind of this little peak oh, yeah. of driving through the desert. Uh, let me find the caption that came with it. Uh, Dune bashing in the Dubai desert. Yes, it was a bumpy ride. Interesting how it's so dark. Why is it that dark inside? You know, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Okay, the answer is you're exposing for the outside. So, of course, the inside's going to be quite dark. Um, you know, that's cool, the silhouettes. It's, again, a sort of a painting type of thing, right? And this is, this is a cool thing because you're, you're not really trying to depict a photojournalistic type shot, although that could easily fit into a series. But it's just really sort of an impressionistic type of look at, at what's going on here. And you get the feeling of a lot of motion. You can see that medallion is kind of on its angle. And the whole shot is, yeah, the whole shot is kind of on an angle. So that's a very interesting photograph. I like it. Good one. I like, like the silhouette. And I like the, the feeling of speed and motion. Cool one. Okay. And this is from Isaac, and it's captioned uh, the it's Lumiere as a as a, as a plant. What was so that like again? the character Lumiere as a plant, like from the Beauty and the Beast? Oh, really? So yeah. they're commenting he looks like Lumiere. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And you know, you got your shallow depth of field, which means that this character is standing out you know an interesting thing Camille Seaman is a um, Native American amazing photographer I've interviewed her and interviewed her for my book create and her belief is that everything is alive I actually subscribe to this everything is alive you know you can talk to trees and you'll feel something coming back but she takes it even to, you know, things like icebergs and mountains have that life in them. And I believe that's true. So you're taking a portrait of this uh, character here. And that's something I find really interesting. Use it as a portrait opportunity. We're kind of essentially, as photographers, always capturing portraits. Everything we ever photograph is a portrait try that mindset next time you go out but because i'm bringing this up because i feel like you've done that you've given it life and you've given it a name and that's part of the portraiture so bravo on that and and for the rest of the audience something to just keep in mind just i'm shooting a portrait no matter what it is i don't care if it's a pencil a broccoli <laughs> leaf <laughs> or a tree or a bush or a cat or a dog or a building you're capturing a portrait what, what do you do when you capture a portrait you're trying to get the personality across right that's what good portraiture does more than just okay here's the person's face so try that out and anyway I'm again saying this because I feel like you've done this so well done I guess we have time for a couple more what else we got yeah, Scott also wanted, uh, or Christopher Scott Carpenter, he, he wanted to see what your thoughts were on this one as well. This is the other photo that he posted. It's, um, uh, obviously, these are uh, Hasidic Jew yeah. uh, school bus and some boys on their way to school. Yeah, you've got some good elements there. You know, you've, you've done what Bob Holmes says, which is try to get their feet up. Yeah, good one. Isn't that funny how that just... That little bit right there makes such a difference. If imagine their feet feet on the ground flat and no space between them, it makes a different photograph. So we get the feeling of this motion. I like it. I think it's a really cool story. That you know these kids are going into the bus like every other kid that you know rides a bus, and there's emotion there. There's you know think about it motion 
What do you do when you get motion and you put an E in the front of it? Emotion. Emotion is often portrayed through motion, which is why, you know, also these other points I've been making about angles gives you a different emotion because you've, you've added, you've, you've used your emotion to, to get a different vantage point. Anyway, that's a good one. I would also recommend, however, just to make this even more interesting, a low angle. Why? Because it will accentuate these kids. It'll also clean up the background a little bit. We got a little bit of a competition with the school bus, but with a lower angle, it, it's gonna get a, you know, we might even get some of the sky. I'm not saying you have to lie on the ground, but drop down. You know, John Todd, sports photographer, did something really interesting. He said he goes out in the backyard and he just practices with his camera. Switching, like he did, he shoots with two, cam two cameras, two different lenses. Shooting one-handed, switching cameras back and forth. And he just drills in the backyard like you would drill basketball. Drill this. Drop to your knee. Stand up. Stand tall. Hold the camera up high because sometimes you want a really high angle, right? Try these different things, like make your body do, you know, just like everything else, there's muscle memory involved. And you don't have to think about it. You go, bam, on your knees, boys. That's out of the U2, U2 song, right? Uh, you know, just think of that. Bam, high angle, you know, various different things. Really try to practice those things because you, this actually may work even better with a high angle. I don't know, but I would capture both. And when you come back, you can check it out. Be really, really as, as versatile as you can. Be like a Swiss army knife with your camera. Okay, think of that. That's my new coined phrase. Be Swiss, be a Swiss army knife with your camera. Cheers. All right, we got time for one or two more. Yep, I think we've got one more <laughs> that I've got here. So on let's... your knees, boy. I'm reading Bono's biography. Autobiography is very interesting. By the way, I this highly is... recommend it. Mm -hmm. This is from Yale. I've seen this one. I really like that. Remind me, I'm going to make a comment about Bono's biography, autobiography in a minute. Will do. Yeah, so cool, you know, with the reflections, that's really cool. A lot of geometry, a lot of symmetry, and uh, patterns. It's got all sorts of compositional tools in it. That's a good one. That's a really good one. All right, I think I'll end with uh, my little commentary on, on Bono. Uh, I'm a big fan of you too, and I am reading his biography. Very interesting. He's very purpose driven. I did not know that. I mean, this guy has done all sorts of fundraising, and you know, he's been deeply involved in um, raising money for the plight of different underdeveloped countries in Africa and that sort of thing using his fame to further a purpose. And I really applaud that. I think it's amazing to see, you know, as an artist, this is something we have to keep in mind. We have our ability, if we're influencing people, to use that and not just sort of stand back, which is what I often see happening. I recommend his book also to get an insight into his creative process. And that's also really interesting to see where these, where these words come from. And he's an amazing songwriter and just the passion that comes out. Uh, you know, I, I recommend reading books about artists and I recommend looking at their art and seeping yourself into documentaries about various kinds of artists. And it doesn't have to be photographers at all. You know, something interesting, when I look at books, I seldom look at books about photography. Seldom. That's not what I'm usually after. I'm usually looking at design or I'm looking at, at you know, the Museum of Modern Art book, which is a variety of different 
artists and that sort of thing. But definitely that's a way to expand your visualization and your inspiration. I definitely draw inspiration from studying and hearing and discovering what these different artists are doing. Well, thank you guys, and I really encourage you to become more and more active in the AYP Club. This is my way to interact with you, and uh, we'll, we'll keep it up for sure. So I hope you guys got some positive feedback that helps. Um, try these things out, okay? Try those things out that I mentioned to you, and, and let's hear about it. Keep interacting in the AYP Club, because that's really important. You know, we have just this one time whenever we decide to schedule this to do critiquing, but the AYP Club is, is there 24-7. Also, do follow me on Instagram because I will make notes about things and give you kind of some update. We're deep into a project, and when I go into a project, I tend to kind of let other things fall away. But we'll be out of that pretty soon. I'll be back putting more stuff out you know, some new videos and Instagram, that sort of thing. Jared, anything else we need to cover before we sign off here? Um, speaking of that project, part of it is that we're trying to, you know, promote a lot of the work that AYP yeah. people have done. Uh, you can look and find, uh, I've put a post out on the AYP club asking for people to share, especially if you have been sharing your work, you know, exhibits, galleries, books. Yes. Uh, prints we'd love to see them so make a post you can either leave it as a comment or its own standalone post and i also put that question up that mark asked question from today's show are you sharing your work with the world if not what's holding you back from sharing your work Good. Uh, so feel free to answer that and i know we had a really nice comment uh from uh dg at the beginning where dg said uh from Cornwall, UK, I often print off images as small 6x4s and let them sit for a while on my notice board. I find it better than leaving them on my PC. So a great way to yeah, good. you know, look at your work other than just through a computer screen. You know, my wife is really good at making books, and uh, she does that. She'll go, you know, at CVS, these pharmacies, you can get prints for like three cents. It's amazing. Mm -hmm five cents whatever they're really cheap and so she'll just get a whole stack of them printed up for like four bucks or whatever and then lay them out on a table and that gives you a visual that's a really good idea you can you can move them around and get the story the way you want okay good so yes I want to second that I want to hear your your successes in terms of getting stuff printed out in the world. Remember Bay Photo Lab will help you with that, where you're showing it on your wall or you're showing it in an exhibit or you're, sh you're selling your work or you've got it in a book, a gallery, a magazine, or you're making zines. I really want, want to hear about that stuff, okay? Would you clue us in? As Jared said, we've got a post, so put it in there and put a picture of what you've got. Make it a good picture too, you know? Same stuff we're talking about, not a whole cluttery background. Give me a good visual because I'd like to use that if I could, okay? All right, you guys. So stay dry. <laughs> this, is, this is the wildest spring I've ever seen. It's like wild winter time here, you know, even though we crossed over to spring. So stay dry, stay creative. And, oh, I haven't even asked you guys to subscribe, so please do subscribe and enable the bell. I don't know what happened to our little video. It just disappeared. And leave your comments. Okay, we've got a really lame switching device here. That There we go. Leave your comments, your likes, share this video. There's a lot of information in here. Really, there's a lot of information. We could make a whole book out of what we've talked about today. So share your, your, your video with others, and last but not least, say it with me. Say it with me. Let me hear you. Okay, I can hear you. <laughs> Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Okay, guys, see you soon.